In the last episode, a group of British amateur engineers finally arrived in Utah for Bonneville's 64th annual Speed Week. Six teams, six very different machines. We came here with the express intention of racing this bike on the salt. There's nowhere else in the world like it. Guys from all walks of life. Guys in sheds, guys in garages, little tinkerers. We're all little tinkers and little feckers, and we like a trinket and a treasure. Why I scream, Bela? All with something to prove. Big records, we're running on a tough record, and we're a long team from a very, very long way away. I mean, how hard can it possibly be? <laughs> there ain't no messing around here, like, you know what I mean? This is it. Time to go fast. guys, this is the fastest speedway in the world. Top speed here, 462 miles an hour. You're going to see every kind of car and motorcycle you could ever dream of. This is the place we're going to be, and this is the fastest there is. Keep track of the street line, the ones go really fast. And then go down to the five mile marker, and you can hear the engine start. And you can hear them coming, but you can't see them yet until they come up over the edge of the earth. The cars will come up to you over the curvature of the earth. The record that the Scottish Streamliner team are trying to break has been held for over 10 years. It's a huge challenge to bring a team of guys from a little garage outside Glasgow with a 300 plus mile an hour car to the Bonneville Salt Flats to try and be one of only seven Brits to break a record here over 300 miles an hour. You know? You know I'd be the, the third living Brit in the, in the 300 chapter of the 200 mile an hour club here. You know, the other six are all legends. I mean, you look at the names, Sir Malcolm Campbell, Donald Campbell, Cobb, Easton, and then Noble and Green. I mean, these guys are heroes. This will be the team's third visit to the flats, having only just missed the record on previous occasions due to technical problems. The record stood for all this time because people reckon it's impossible to go any quicker. We need to prove them wrong. If we don't break the record this year, or if we don't even break 300, we will have failed, and we will have failed miserably. And um, right now, failure is not something I want to contemplate. Most of the teams are prepping their vehicles for their first run. Put some more fuel on it, and we're ready to go. Hey, let's go. Fresh in the knowledge they've passed the rigorous tech inspection, the teams begin the five mile trip to the start line. But before they can even attempt a record, they'll first need to qualify for a license by proving they can safely ride down the track within a set range of speeds. So, Bonneville's pretty unique, aren't it? Yesterday, raining, buckets, two inches of water everywhere, loads of long faces, everybody getting drunk. Today, race face. DJ and his partner Dave have gone back to basics with their retro Suzuki. It's interesting because it's a 30 year old bike. Everyone else is doing it on modern stuff with hybrid turbos. Fair play to them, that's the easy way. Uh, we like older stuff. I mean, you can't buy a bike like this, so you have to go and make one. I've got butterflies, I'm nervous, I've got the whole gambit, it's all going on, you know. He's going to be the same, he'll be the same when I'm on it. You're just nervous because you're sending someone off on something you're building, you're like, things are going in your head, did I, did I, did I? DJ and Dave know they will need a minor miracle to get near the 203 mile an hour record. But 
Derek Bonneville for the long haul. Their target this year is to upgrade the 150 license they already hold to a license that entitles them to go over 175 miles an hour. Can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. But I know that when I get down the pot on the line, I'm going to be shaking like a leaf. But we'll see what the old girl will do. I've never done this before, ever. I've gone fast and everything, but I've never raced against the clock or tried to set a, a speed. I've only gone fast, usually trying to get away from the police. <laughs> Our record is not phenomenally high. No. If we get absolutely everything right and clean behind us and it's downhill, we might get, I don't know, 180 if we're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, Steve and Dave went to Bonneville as spectators and got their licenses on a borrowed bike. The salt fever took hold and now they've built their very own bike from scratch. I've put pictures of these up on Facebook pages and I had comments people saying, Wow, who made that? So I said, Dave did. And everything's being made by now. Yeah. For Steve and Dave to get the record, they'll need to beat 88 miles an hour in a 750cc class. The fastest I've been on the road is 160. I was on a trike. And I didn't even fancy seem particularly fast. I was on the A14 in rush hour. As the more experienced rider, Steve gets the first chance to put the bike through its paces. Geordie Oz was last here in 2009. Every day since has been dedicated to getting back to the salt. We get in at about 5 o'clock, work till about 8 o'clock, have a bit of tea, watch an hour's telly, then go to bed. And start again the next day. Always the same. Every night. Unfortunately for Oz, his three-year quest to beat a 196-mile-an-hour record might have to wait a little longer. Oz has taken a turn for the worse with a recurring chronic illness. Far too ill to ride, he's resting in a local campsite away from the chaos and heat of the flats. PJ's partner Dave is next up. Gagging for it now. Yeah, Mark's going like a stolen moped. Yeah, can't oh, wait. Really buzzing. It's just nice to get back on something. We had a race again, you know. Um, are you nervous? Yeah, of course I'm nervous. So if you're not nervous, then uh, there's nothing wrong with that, I think, maybe. You know, it's there. We'll get the cheaters. But it's a respect thing, you know. Don't respect it, it's gonna bite you and kill you. To get their 175 license, a run of between 150 and 175 miles an hour is required on the 30-year-old bike. Steve and Dave's bespoke bike has already found its first gremlin. So, slowing it down is yeah, an art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then eventually it just went from and done. Can we get it moved and go again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's annoying in the way that the engine wouldn't take full throttle. And so I was feathering it along and I thought, why can't I see my speedo? I've forgotten to switch it on. So now I switched the speedo on and the vibration increased and the power lead jumped out. So I have no idea how fast that was. How many things have fallen off? I don't know. 
At these high speeds, drivers and riders have mile upon mile of salt on which to stop their vehicles. But it doesn't always go to plan. for content or style. It's only the top speed at the designated mile marker that counts. Dave and Steve should be confident they have a record-breaking time. The current record is set at a modest 88 miles an hour. Because we've got something we more of us. That's all we want. Yeah. All I'm going to say is, look at the speed in mile two, which is 129 miles yes. an hour. Oh. Half throttle. Yeah, there you go, see. 129 mile an hour on part throttle. There you go. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> In theory, 129 miles an hour is more than enough to qualify for a record attempt. Come on, I'm getting hot. Let's get back. But to make a second run, they'll first need to find out what caused the engine to fail. <laughs> Chris Ireland decided to make the trip to Bonneville after watching a film about legendary Kiwi bike builder Bert Munro. It's his first visit to the salt flats. It is going to be an experience. I'm getting a really bad disease now that people have probably told you about. Salt fever. You heard that phrase. Salt fever is what everybody's got. After two years of planning, Chris is about to find out if his 70-year-old 500cc Indian will hold together whilst going for the 127 mile an hour record. What goes through my mind is, um praying that the clutch will work on it for a start, that it won't perfect every time. And you hope that you've got your jetting right and your gearing right, and it's going to pull out okay and then kick her over, shit your pants. So I'm actually looking at the red counter all the time, I'm trying to keep my head down. And you just hope to play your engine and I'm going to blow up between your legs. I guess you could say your mind almost goes blank doing these runs. You don't always thought about anything when you get to the end. There's a weird feeling when you've actually finished the run. You've got this feeling of solitude. In the middle of the desert, your bike's steaming away. And it's just been run flat out against something it was never ever designed for. You really can't describe it. It's like being on the moon. So I'm knackered there. I'm, I'm out of breath. I had a full head of hair when I set off, it's blown it all off. How can you describe that? The, the, the only thing you can say to me is, get out there, go and have a look. Chris's bike only reached 69 miles an hour. The record's 127 miles an hour, and I don't think we're going to get anywhere near it, but I haven't come here to break records, come here to have a good time. And so if I don't break a record, I don't care. Team Page from Hertfordshire have their own very personal reasons for joining the contingent of bikers. Our friend Mike died a couple of years ago from a heart attack at a young age. He had this bike that he'd been rebuilding for 20 plus years and never finished it. It became a long running joke. Everyone always used to ask him if he finished the bike, if he finished the bike, and it never happened. Compared to the other teams, they're the least experienced. I'm an architectural technologist and building services engineer. I'm an IT manager. I'm a grinder. <laughs> if each grinder you are a grinder. I'm about to do my first run at Bonneville Salt Flats. Alien is the first to ride the Mike Page special as they begin their pursuit of a 124 mile an hour record. It's only 10 a.m., but already the sun's beating down well into the 40s. We probably got a gallon of sweat inside this suit with me right now. The only way to get the heat out is through my head with this fan, and I got a cold rag on top. The track's been open for a while now, and already there's been 
I mean, it's... We had an accident on two, and so they take all the ambulances to go over there, so they shut everything down. So we can't run until the ambulances are back in place. If you look out there, you can see all the cars in the middle, that's where the accident is. Once they clear that up, they get back, then we'll be back to running. Well, we saw one of the first 300 mile an hour passes the day today, just the Marrow Streamliner. And he threw the chute, and the chute picked up the back of the car. And the car turned hard right and fired off the track at uh, 300 plus miles an hour. He was lucky, he's a very big, heavy car. We wouldn't have got away with it. Our car was too light, we'd have got flicked up, we'd maybe got turned over. So, uh, just a little bit sobering for the first day back on the salt. If, if, you, if you fall off, first thing you get, you get rid of it. Check it out your way. The only enemy you ate there is the bike itself. The rest of it is just hopefully slowly and a bit of skin missing. But if you break an arm, that's not a, a bad injury, considering what we do. I mean, got to keep things in some sort of balance, aren't you? If I was thinking about, am I going to get hurt, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't be doing this. It's a dangerous sport riding one side. The faster you go, the harder you're going to hit the ground. There's a trip, so something stop it, Eric. <laughs> This isn't sitting in a car behind a windscreen, you know, with a seatbelt on it. You know, this is two wheels, this is 300 horsepower, no speed limits. All you've got to do is remember the way. Meanwhile, Dave and Steve may have uncovered why their bike suddenly lost power. The whole thing seized. Yeah, the whole thing seized. Yeah. Yeah. Something has gone in it. Yeah, it's got all of them as well. Yeah. It's gone in it. Steve. No, I'm take, taking the pieces over. I can see here. Steve, 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 you won't get from the top. Right. It's everywhere. No, it's, it's, it's everywhere. What I'm look, trying to do is to try and cut the pieces over and jam it from me moving it further forward. It won't, because it's everywhere. We can see it in this head. Well, there's a piece here. Between there and the yeah, there's a little bit of paper that gets you. It's fucking gone for us. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck it. This is our business. We don't know what's happened to what caused that. You know, don't ask me at the moment. I mean, don't ask me at the fucking moment. I'm just fucked. It's completely fucked. Yes. Yeah, it's completely Badness. fucked. That piece of metal has gone in there and seized the lock. Well, the that? supercharger is dead. Can you get another one? No. Oh. Oh. No, I don't think I can. I don't see something. It's eaten something. Yes. It's eaten something big time. It's not coming back there, is it? And it's literally just peeled the aluminium off the side. Oh. Oh. This is as bad as the entire engine going back. We don't go anymore. Well, this is quite a new one, though, from somewhere. We don't go anymore. Unless we can replace that. Anymore. Game over for us on the salt if we can't replace it. The rest of it is minimal. There's nothing else wrong with the rest of it. But this is a... Ironically, it's one of the only parts on their bespoke bike that they didn't handcraft yeah, themselves. If, if, if there's a gap between here and case, air just leaks past and it, it won't make boost pressure. Despite being nearly 30 miles an hour off the record, Team Pages spirits couldn't be more different. Bunch of idiots. <laughs> I'm sure Mike would go, yeah, he'd be well impressed, I think, from Dublin. Quite tough, I think. He'd probably have like, a thousand suggestions about what we've been going to do. He would probably be going, now, what we want to do now is, like, bike works, bike runs, that's another big tick in the box, tick page. <laughs> Well, it doesn't really matter how fast you go, because it's never going to be fast enough. And when you get that first urge, when you, I just want to go to 200. I'm really going to, I just want a car that will go to 200, and then I'll be fine. But I really want to go 225. Okay, do you know how close we are to 250? 300. This car could go 300. Wow. 
It's never fast enough. You can always go one mile an hour faster. You're going to set a record at Bonneville. This is where your record's going to come from. All the communications and all the timing all come through the main timing tower, which is where we're at right now. We're out between courses one and two at about the three mile mark, which puts us in about the middle of the course. So we can see the cars just coming off the starting line, and then we can also see them finishing just past the five. It's a long course. We've got a car coming right now. We control the pace of the race and the safety of the race. It's our job to make sure that we get all the cars down the course and that they get down the course safely. Period. Copy underway. Coming up next, we're going to have car 1133. This is the I Bloomfield Streamliner of Rick Pearson's The Flower of Scotland. He's got bigger since last year, that's a good one. Having spent the last 52 weeks cooped up in a garage, it's finally time to see how the revamped flower performs. A push vehicle is used to get the streamliner moving along a 10 mile track. And with their 300 license still valid from last year, they can go straight for the record. Rick has only managed to get up to the third mile where he pulled the chute. The early signs are far from promising. I'm going to try and bend the blower. I'm not going to give up until I have to give up. Maybe to race it, you We'll be back. Yes, the supercharger is a mess. It's a big mess. It may not be fixable. I may spend all day today and half of tomorrow trying. And in the end, we fail. But at least we try. Steve's got some idea what it's located like there when we're almost sleep. I've no idea at all. This one can go steal a boat from somewhere. That's all. I threw the chute and the smoke's still coming in. So I thought about turning it off once and I don't know, so that I went the canopy up, so I the canopy up on the door, you know, using the engine air brake to slow the car up. There's as much as you can do to hold it up against the wind, yeah? But at least then the air, the smoke cleared and I could breathe again, but we actually, probably wasn't very bright. <laughs> Not an ideal start, but the team will have a week to get it right. Full of fighting spirit, PJ is fueled up and ready to go. We're allowed to give him the right chance. But is it enough to get what they came for? The 175 license. I like engineering and that work. I hate the woodwork. If you made something wrong with woodwork, you can't put the wood back. But in metalwork, you could weld it back on again. This is carving. This is art. Not metalwork. It's a bit like whittling a piece of wood, but I'm whittling a piece of aluminium. Whether I'll be successful, whether it'll work, this time next week. <laughs> What's the main reason that these people are here? There's only one reason. It's for a record on a book like this. And while it doesn't seem like much, having your name listed in this book means a lot to the people that are doing it. Just run out the back door 157 at mile 2. It was 144. And mile 3, it's 157. So it's taken some good figures there. Hey, today. We did it, bro. PJ and Dave have achieved their goal. They're now both proud owners of a 175 license. Simple life form gets a little bit of paper. Simple life form makes happier. Now I 
officially give up trying to repair the super truck. Just not. You don't stick at things very long. Well. I think it's a case of flogging a dead horse. Dave and Steve will now spend the rest of the week as reluctant spectators. Most of the teams have their licenses, but are getting nowhere near their records. You gotta have more than want it. You have to earn it. And part of earning it is a respect for the place, the people, for the machinery, to understand that there's a karma that goes back and forth. You have to understand this. So, people come think, oh, it's flat. All I gotta do is have a lot of horsepower, go straight, put my foot down, and, and have courage, and, you know, and go fast as I can. Yeah, I'm sorry, that don't work. Last year we, we didn't have engine problems, we had transmission problems. We kept wrecking the gearboxes for some reason, but we seem to have cured one problem and generated another. The other engine's just scrap metal. I mean, it's uh, totally destroyed. Absolutely and utterly and totally destroyed. The only good thing that's left is the gearbox seems to be okay. Oh, I'm fed up about it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the way it goes, you know, it's full of lows and highs. I mean, the lows are really low and the highs are really high. This year, the salt is unusually rough, and the Flower of Scotland team are not the only ones suffering. It's sort of up, and I'm just making the north and the west and the top end. So, I'm just going to put it apart and see what's what, see what's wrong with it. Just started out. Oh, that's lovely, though. Oh, that's a big one. Once again, Frog's engineering prowess comes to the fore. I found the owl. You found the owl? Yeah, look. Let's have a look. Ah! Uh -huh. Well, initially, it fell out rattling around in there. That's where he's coming out from. I think that's the old he's coming out from. We're hoping. This is Team Page's first visit to Bonneville, but petrol heads have been coming to the salt for the last 64 years. Seven days dedicated to the pursuit of speed. It's a unique setting where new friendships will be made and machines and records broken. Chris Ireland originally planned to come out to the flats as a team of one, but he has since acquired two younger assistants. Well, my pit wallers. <laughs> Thank you. Hard work sometimes, but I wouldn't miss it for anything. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Really good. Apart from, you know, some of the views are not great. <laughs> but, uh, no, we're getting on all right. Chris's dedicated assistants are looking after every minor detail. It keeps the heat off the seat, because the seat gets really hot. So when he sits down, it don't fry his bits, you know. With a few runs under his belt, Chris is brimming with confidence. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> It's what? It was built in England, this. Modern Indian 6 Wow. It takes a lot of tuning to get those old Indians to run. So this well, is hard for believe it. It's me better than I thought it would. <laughs> Each team has had at least a couple of runs down the salt. But for Geordie Oz, his three-year quest has been put on hold. It's basically uh, an ongoing stomach problem that I've had for about five years and basically it all just snips up solid in you. I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, basically everything backs up and it's very, very painful. But uh, because there's no surgical department in Wendover, we have to drive 120 miles to the emergency room because if something 
internally bursts, it's going to be terminal. So it hasn't been a case of not racing because I don't want it. It's been a case of I don't want to die for it. Oz's wife was due to arrive three days ago, but due to flight delays, she won't be turning up till later tonight. So that will take a lot of the stress away. Like she's always um, upbeat. She makes me feel better just being around, so that's a good thing. Back on the salt, Chris's bike is a long way off the 127 mile an hour record, but he hopes he's heading in the right direction. 80.37. Oh, well done. Well done, that man. Getting better. It's getting better. Excellent. made my day. That's excellent. That's really chilled. <laughs> A dramatic change in the weather means the flower have missed their chance to get a run today. And as the wind speeds increase, the lightweight car needs to be packed away for safety. An abrupt end with the raising of the wind, you know. We did not intend to start it, but the battery's a bit down and we can't leave it out in this way. For some, today has been a relative success, but for the majority, it's been a combination of Mother Nature's wrath and mechanical malfunctions. After nearly a week, most of the riders have had their chance to take on the empty planes. <laughs> Having just arrived, Oz's wife Bex has persuaded him to have a run, figuring that the best cure for cabin fever is a dose of salt. It's not the same once you're not together, is it? No, it's just trying to make your routine week the front's long and short of it. Yeah. This will be his first day out in the salt, so I think it will be a major relief to him just to get up the salt and do a run and see how the bike is and see whether all the work he's done pays off. He's still in a lot of pain and he's not eating anything, so that'll add to the general tiredness and fatigue. And then there's the stress, but I mean, if he gets on the bike and it runs well, then I think a lot of that stress will dissipate. I can't describe it, it's not nervousness, but the tension is there, you so want him to do it. But at the same time, there's that feeling that, God, what if something goes wrong? Oz's record sits at 195 miles an hour, but clearly glad to be back in the saddle, he has just one thing in mind. I have no strategy when I get on the bike at all. Nail it really right and see where it goes to the right front. Back at the start of the long track, the flower is holding up the line. So somebody ready to go. It won't be two minutes, I'm sorry. Sorry, let him go. Let him go. Let him go, Jim. Oz has reached mile marker three. I don't know whether I was going fast or not. I had it wound out in fifth and sixth, I think. So I, I presume it was doing. 145 plus, I presume, but I really don't know. It looked good. You looked like you had a good line out there. It looked all right. Yeah. I'll call it a day for the day, and then tomorrow I'll start racing proper. Don't want to rush into it. Not 100%, but good enough to spank up the salt and full tilt, am I? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, that was good. That was good. How could you not be proud of someone who's worked so hard to make that happen and, and then has gone out and done it and yeah, I'm really proud of it. Oz hit a maximum speed of 149 miles an hour, 
And now, it's Rick's turn to post a good time. I'm radio on the show we're done. We got a tail on the show. That's a tail on the show. Looks pretty good. He's gone. Things might look good from the crew vehicle, but at the business end, it's a different story. What is that out here on the right? All these people gathered up in this spot out here on the right. That's what the car is. It's a car. It's a car. It's a car. Right out here to the right. We're all these people on the right here. That's him. Pick a right. I can see the car. Oh, man, it's to me. They've been shouting fire for quite some distance. Basically, we'd had a fuel pipe come off. So we were spraying methanol around the engine bay, and that had caught and blown up. I found a turn off stopped the car and bailed out of the left hand side and as I piled out I heard the, the fire fire I turned around the guy was there with the fire bottle and he said very politely sir you have paint blistering you are on fire hey I got paint blistering fire bring me a CO2 quickly and then basically I just you know knock yourself out and they started spraying halo into the engine bay to sort the fire out <laughs> We had a medic on the scene to check me over, make sure I hadn't any smoke inhalation. And um, they basically saved the day because they've got the fire out on the car. Although she looks pretty bad, um, it's cosmetic. The team will spend the rest of the afternoon preparing a streamliner for the final full day on the suit. At the end of Speed Week in sight, the teams are realizing how hard it is to claim a record on the salt. Well, I guess I spent all day adjusting the valve clearances, changing the jets, setting different sprockets on it, and then I ran five mile an hour slower. <laughs> yeah, no hurry. Even eternally buoyant Team Page is suffering. Yesterday we had fuel issues, then we had electrical issues, and then we had a fairly vital piece of the, the framework snapped. And we needed to get some welding done this morning first thing, so it's time to go through it all again now and see what the problem is. I would say our chance of breaking the record is slim to none at the moment. I don't think Mike wants to go this fast yet, he's not ready. He's, he's, he's a bit of an old timer. <laughs> Talk about me again. No, I'm talking about mine. Oh, right. Front one. Another engine. Hopefully no fires. Um, well, it should be all right. Everyone's been checked, double checked, checked again, so... But out here, things happen. Things go wrong. If we can make it to the five mile mark, I'll be happy. Make a full pass. If we make it to the five mile, we should be going quicker and get there, so we'll see. Beautiful piece. Love it. Still a funny colour, though. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's not many green cars here, so we had to have something different. And the flower of Scotland is green and purple, you know, so we had to have it, you know. It goes back generations, the green is considered a bad luck color on a race car. Bonneville sits nearly four and a half thousand feet above sea level, but there's a price riders have been paying for this relatively untouched landscape. The thinner air makes combustion engines work even harder converting fuel into power. I'm just changing the fuel now because uh, a couple of the racers have told me that this high octane stuff is doing more harm than good. So I'm going to try ordering pump petrol in it now, see if that makes a difference. I mean the engine is running really nice, but it just won't pull any revs on the top end. So it's not getting enough fuel or oxygen, one of the two. But the altitude and rough terrain are not the only things they have to contend with. Out here, anything can happen. Oh, yeah, 
He's probably got a big fright, to be quite fair. If he did be, he's not human, you know. Two hundred and fifty miles an hour is the best speed they've posted this week. But Rick has to bail out early once again. It seems there's more coming out the back than just the shoot. Now we're going to have to tell Rick what a hero he is, and we know he'll not be comfortable with that. Look how cool is that cucumber? Look in the park. It looked like it was fixing to go teeter, 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 and it went... Having averted one disaster, another becomes apparent. Uh, the chain has uh, come off the back. Got a broken chain. So something, something's gone on. There's oil dripping out the back of it. Like the rear parachute's got oil all over it. Here. That is a. Uh, very healthy. Rick's been slowly inching up on this record. It's been a very rough week for Rick. They uh, received the car about four days later than they should have, put him a little behind schedule, but nonetheless they worked very hard to get here. Back in the pits, the post-race assessment uh, continues. What I do want to see is just a broken chain and not no other damage, you know. That's the chain, the front drive chain. There's lots of spray onto the chain to keep it cool. And for some reason it's got very hot. It's broke. We'll have to see what damage the chain's done when it's come off. Because we're like a flail more. We'll just, we'll just chew everything in front of it. So we'll get this open and have a look see. They'll now need to take out the engine again in order to check the transmission and see if anything needs replacing. The real important thing we can do with this time is the ice cream van. Ice cream vans are like policemen, you never get one when you need one. In the previous two years we've broken other things and clearly the fire yesterday was a major setback for the car. Poor old thing is pretty wounded and uh, it's a lot to ask at this point to, uh, to expect to keep going. But, uh, well, the keep box is still intact. No. Yeah, oil drop, broke out, it's absolutely brand new. It's the few box engine survived. We've got a leak somewhere, but as I say, we're not replacing it, we're just, we'll cure the leak. It's fire. <laughs> and it's not only Rick and Derek that Lady Luck has changed the fortunes of. As, as you do in motor sports, somebody's often being ruined. You can't see me then, can you? Yeah, we, we're letting our mate Dave Branch go out because, uh, you know, him and Steve worked so hard on that bike. Dave has practically hand engineered every part of that bike. They've brought it all the way to America and uh, Steve got a nice little run on an 80 mile an hour record. He went 129 and the blower packed up. The only part that Dave hadn't built was let him down. So we said you can take a shot on that. Hopefully he'll have a nice run and get his license. To get his 150 license, Dave needs to keep the bike between 125 miles an hour and 150. PJ's last run of 164 shows the bike has more than enough clout. Having had just one run on the bike, it's a disappointing end to Oz's week. So the bike is loaded up now to take back to the campsite. It's a bit upsetting to be honest because we've only managed one run up the salt. He's been so ill that that one run was really all he could do and it wiped him out for the rest of the day. It's upsetting because there's three and a half years work in that bike, but I would rather have him home in one piece than him be so ill. So he's on the mend and the bike will come home and we'll be back again sometime. With his supercharger shredded, Dave has finally got his ride up the salt on a borrowed bike, his kind benefactor just behind him.
can't, can't wait to see his face at the other end, really. I hope he's got a real nice smile on him. Oh, but. Oh, well, it's no big deal. I've got some extra glasses. I've got completely right. lost on the gear changes. Just go now. Just go now. Just go. Not a lot. I've got to be sure of the bloody gears. Why did you do 164 mile an hour? Did I? Was I got that far? 154? 154? Yeah. That'd be 153. That'd be about 153. Oh well. Okay. well, perhaps I didn't get mixed up. I don't know what the hell looked like he was. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble is, you might be told off. Oh, yeah, I'll probably be told off. Right, don't get in the van. Yeah. Let's get you out of this, alright. Oh, I thought I might have written less of it. I, I, I just I thought I mixed all the gears up, but apparently I hadn't. So I've actually just gone quicker than I should have done. It's a smile. That's what I wanted. A smile. I didn't organise any of this. These guys. Yeah. Didn't know about it. At all. Yeah. We were on the salt this morning watching. He tells us he's got a ride. And here we are now, about three hours later. He's not going to get the helmet back on with that grin. So we've been at Bonneville twice, and twice you've gone faster than me. Long way continue. <laughs> Attention, this is only one free racing. You get caught through else's by, they probably shoot you. You can imagine Lewis going up to Red Bull said, Mine's broken, can I play with yours? <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's the last full day of racing. The once flat salt surface has rapidly deteriorated, making each pass even harder. Undeterred, Rick is still hungry for a record. To get the blue cap, we need to break a record at over 300 miles an hour. It's a real challenge to getting one of those hats here at Bonneville. That's why there's only 75 blue hats ever. And there's only six Brits, there's only two Disney Brits. You know, it's a, a very elite club. On course now, we've got vehicle 1133, Rick Pearson's The Flower of Scotland. Class record currently stands at 313.980. Alright guys, stop him and strap him. Get him in there. If they can match or better the current record, an average over two runs will be taken, and Rick could join the infamous 300 Club. And the bright green streamliner goes through mile four with a speed of 215.916. And here is the chute, and the car slows as it goes into mile five, about 100 miles an hour short of the record. It looked to be going away really well, but then Rick's Streamliner is not the only vehicle to have taken such a beating from the salt this week. Team Page's Triumph Bonneville was built to break a 124 mile an hour record as a tribute to their friend. So far it's managed only 90 miles an hour and the bike is on its last legs. I think we should play something to start something else. We're going to get it together. We'll take it back down the bottom end. And we're going to run it and drop his ashes. Uh, I think we can probably get it to run well enough to do one more run. And then we'll, we'll do the deal. We've built the bike. We've got it here. We've all had a ride. We've all got our licenses. Mission successful as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Come on, Mike. One more. Team Page's bike defying the odds once again, it's down to Chief Engineer Derek to pinpoint the Streamliner's latest mechanical hey. failure. <laughs> now there we go. 
that is the bottom of the spark plug. For some reason it's sheared. If I can get this off of here, I will show you. That originally was in there. So after the two, he was running in three cylinders. We ran on three cylinders. He's got the 200 mile an hour pass. Well, he now holds a record for a 750cc car. <laughs> <laughs> if only, yeah. So we put a fresh one in and we should be good to go reasonably really quickly, yeah? All week, the team have fought hard in the face of adversity and now need to rally for one last assault on the record. Well, I've been here for a week. There's some pretty good runs and this is the last one, so we're really going to go for it. Despite all his hard work, Chris is well off the 123 mile an hour record, but hopes his Indian would have left a lasting impression. In the 1,000cc motorcycle category, you will see Bert Monroe, he had an Indian, 1967, 183 miles an hour. That record from 1967 still stands today. And that, I think, is a tribute to how crafty some of these individuals can be, including a man from New Zealand who made his own pistons, built his own bike, and brought it over here and had great success. And to this day, his record still stands. I think that's pretty cool. Inspired by Bert's legacy, Chris and his well-oiled pit crew are primed for one last push. I think learn from what Chris has done here is if you want something hard enough, you can get it. But you've got to work at it, you've got to push it. I mean, he's really worked at it. I definitely think Britain has forgotten about people who use their hands to, you know, to build stuff. And they need to remember that. The engine is 70 years old, 1942. It was left here after the war. Chris has just brought it back to America and raced it down the salt flats at Bonneville. Oh, girl. How much better can you get than that? Chris has reached a very respectable top speed of 81.5 miles an hour, twice the speed of the original bike. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, George. <you're laughs> <you. laughs> Look at that. Well done. Well done. They're just having the best time of their little boy lives. I don't care how much gray hair is on their head, they are having a great Time. And that's the whole point of it. This is an elixir of youth. You're doing something. You have worth. You put relevance back into your own life. With the day coming to an end, the flower must now get a successful pass of at least 313 miles an hour. It's like a cat with nine lives. We just don't know how to kill it. We've had it on fire. We tried to turn it over. We've blown up everything in it that we can blow up, and it's still running. So we're going to give it another shot. As Rick puts pedal to metal, the team all know it's make or break. Who's the flavor? Just pull one of these legs off first. Well, that's the biggest show. Please don't show this to my kids. Yeah. I didn't sign up for that, Jim. The thing you put in this one. Oh, no. These two have never their lives, and they're now best mates. Yeah. You picked me up at the uh, airport. <coughs> That's the first I've seen. It's all about making friends, and everybody helping each other. All the other race teams, everybody helps each other, yeah? And the final time, you alright? Yeah. <laughs> the best thing was, we missed the Olympics as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Oh, he's out of there.
is one of my favourite places on the planet. And I uh, don't know if we're going to make it back here. So we'll just enjoy the moment. Yeah, it was worth it every minute. And all the struggling financially to get here. I think they've amazed all the Americans. I think they're pretty impressed with us, especially by the machines we brought with us. I mean, our kit has been full of visitors all week. There was someone coming around to talk to us. <laughs> Some fella came up to the van and I was sat in my leathers and he said, I just want to thank you. He said, uh, if it wasn't for you and your film, I wouldn't be here. And he thought I was Burt Monroe. <laughs> the world's fastest Indian. NBC. Well, they've just came off one of the gears and um, what happens is it jams against something else and it just explodes the casings. So, we're done in gearbox wise. Maybe see if we can build one up again but you can see the point now. One at a time, one at a lot. Now we've achieved nothing. Um, in my turn to swing. Everybody's gutted. Um, no, we came to the 300 miles now. We came to break a record at 320. And. Uh, they can now send a few meters. We need to finish. Come on. <laughs> I think it's actually the jack shaft, the, the second jack shaft is night on the most alive. It's such a Jenny's <laughs> actually seriously. <sick. laughs> I don't know whether it's totally alive, but the, the gearbox is intact, it's the, it's the jack shaft. I mean, I'm, I'll, uh, I need to go and find bearings and whatnot, but as I say, at this minute in time, it might not be totally dead, but I'll tell you this much. Terry cannot believe it. There's no way that little car can get up and run again. <laughs> I just wouldn't bet too much in it. I just wouldn't bet too much in it. They never give up. I just asked them to push it out the back and take photographs of it. Um, to be fair though, she's so wounded that even if they fix that, I'm not sure we can do 300 miles an hour this week, but uh, I'm not going to stop them. He's supposed to be using super glue for this. <laughs> Got to staple it on. <laughs> Careful on it. Mike would have liked the silliness now. The shirts and the tashes, he'd have loved this. He'd have lapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Look like a young Terry Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all tashed up. Tashes everywhere. Hippie will take the Mike Page special out for the last time. It's a poignant moment as he heads out onto the salt to scatter the ashes of his old school friend. I'll be sitting here for a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 take some of mine. Sorry. Watch out, this boy. How'd he go? It went away, so still got a price of record. 
Yeah. 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 Hopefully break here someday, maybe, but if not, we'll do it somewhere else. Well, yeah. if we break a record with it, we still put Mike's name in the record book, because it's now the Mike Bay special, it always will be. Yeah. yeah. To Mike in there. Yeah. 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 Let's go and crack a cold. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Here's on. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm going to go down I'm to go down to go man when he was around, loved him to bits, well missed. Could have picked a better bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this proves that we haven't stopped thinking about him and we won't yeah. stop thinking about him. Absolutely. Sitting in the cabin by yourself feeling ill is not good. When you've got your best mate with you, it makes it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> This trip's not been about making records, it's just, it's almost like a pilgrimage. It's been absolutely brilliant, right. we have made new friends, everybody's helped each other out. What's it like in one word? We came, we saw, we got the hell kicked out of us, but that's what this place is all about. Was it worth it? It's definitely worth it. No matter what classroom, whether it's a 50 or a two and a half litre class on a bike, you earn it. You're not giving anything out here, ever. People think it's easy, but yeah. well, if it's easy, go, just come and have a go. <laughs> it ain't easy. Stay with us on BBC HD, we're taking the adrenaline down just a notch or two with a distinctly jolly edition of QIXO next. <laughs> 